Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Sunday, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, Sunday, the 13th day of November, year of our Lord, 2022. We do pray this finds you well. Had an absolutely wonderful time out at Zion, Taylor Ridge, one of our sister churches. Always a beautiful setting out there. Had a bonfire with the youth group. Um, number of churches were there, just had a, and played some games, ate some s'mores and some hot dogs, cooked over the fire. Just a really nice evening with uh, those young men and women. So you can rejoice in that. Encourage youth to come. Anybody's welcome to come to that. So uh, encourage the youth to come. Snow in the forecast for Tuesday, one to three inches. I didn't see the border. My guess is it's going to be a little further north, but I'll let you know as uh, as time moves closer. So you know, if you haven't already, maybe get the leaves up. It's not good. You know, once the snow is on the ground, it's not good for the grass if you care. Uh, also, if you have something like a snow blower or anything like that, it's a good time before the snow comes to make sure that it works. You know, often. Uh, these little work, a little maybe a spark plug change or something like that. So anyway, it's coming. Be prepared. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night, peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. I herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And we pick up where we left off last night in the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Tonight, moving through chapter 26, we start at verse 20 and go through verse 35. When, his, when it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same, and that is the gospel of the Lord. So we see the institution of the Lord's Supper bracketed by Judas and then Peter really doing the same thing. Uh, we heard last night how Judas arranges for 30 pieces of silver to hand the Lord over. It's interesting, too, that word to hand over, to betray, to hand over. That That's the same word we often use of the Lord's Supper. Paul uses that in 1 Corinthians, that... He hands over what he received. You know, he had, um, that's really what my job is when it comes to teaching in the church, is to hand over what I've received, not to invent anything new. I can learn things that I've not learned before. That's not what I'm talking about. But to say everybody was wrong until I came along. Trust me, after 2,000 years, you heard me say this many times, 
After 2,000 years, I have nothing to say to you that has not already been said. So we see that, okay, they're keeping the Passover. He says, one of you will betray me. And actually, they're all going to betray them, betray him in their own way as we do in our own ways. And they're very sorrowful, as we are when we're finally told to our face what we are as we stand before God. And he says, you know, the person who betrays me is one who's sitting here eating with me now. I mean, we eat with the Lord every Sunday. We eat of the Lord every Sunday. When we're confirmed, we take a vow that you know, we'll, we'll face death rather than turn away from this faith. And then many do. You know, maybe some of you listening are people who've been confirmed that haven't set foot in church in a long, long time. Well, you're listening. I thank God for that. Really like to see you in church. And then finally, Judas says, is it I? And he says, yeah, you said it. You said it. And that's kind of an interesting way that that occurs. That we, you know, will stand before God in his church and say, you know, is that me you're describing? And he says, you've said it. And sometimes we listen and repent. And other times we're like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm right. You're wrong. That kind of thing. And the focus here isn't on Judas, it's on Jesus. So now, after that episode, we have the giving of the Lord's Supper words that we heard this morning. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. As he goes on to say, to what purpose? It's the, it's the covenant. Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. It's for you, for your forgiveness. You partake of it. That it is the covenant that God establishes with you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's interesting, in the Old Testament, those covenants, God is always the one who ratifies them. Here it's being ratified, of course, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the result is your forgiveness. That you are an heir to the kingdom of heaven, an heir to everlasting life. And notice, he says, you know, uh, I'm not going to drink it again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you. It's a New Testament, a new covenant. The Old Testament is now fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. And then when we celebrate the supper, we are now um, in the Father's kingdom, through the blood of Christ, drinking, eating, and drinking with the Lord, having a foretaste of the feast to come. And we had sing those marvelous hymns where he is both um, the food and the host. He's the meal and the host. It's one of the great mysteries. The Lord's Supper is really one of the great mysteries of the church. We do it because God says so. We see it right here. We'll celebrate this on Monday, Thursday, which will be next spring. The institution, the giving of the Lord's Supper. And it is a gift for you. For, it's for your forgiveness. And we know he says, this is my body. This is my blood. The church, until very modern times, has not looked at that as metaphor. And you can't look at that as metaphor. Uh, uh, when you look at it as, as, as what Jesus is doing, and then you know, St. Paul makes sure you're very clear on that. And this is recorded in 1 Corinthians. This is not a metaphor. That we, as God ordains it, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in this blessed sacrament. And it's for our forgiveness. And what the sacrament does, well, it's kind of outside the scope of our discussion today, but you know, very simply, this is why we do it. He tells us to do it, and there's great blessing in it. Forgiveness. All right. um, then they go out and they sing, uh, they sing a hymn, they go out to the Mount of Olives, and he says this, now this goes back to what we heard about Judas. You will all fall away because of me this night. Uh, they're, they're coming. They're going to arrest him. You know, there's going to be a kerfuffle where he cuts off, the, or Peter cuts off the, uh, Malchus's ear, and Jesus heals him. And Jesus says, no, 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 you know, you're not going to, the kingdom of God isn't coming by swords. It isn't coming that way. But he says here, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. When we're afraid, you know, when we see somebody been beaten up for the faith, it is a very common human reaction to just cower in fear. We do. And they all say, it's not just Peter. Peter is singled out in the text here, but they all say it. And he says to Peter, when Peter says, you know, even though if everybody falls away, I will never fall away. And Jesus says, you know, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. We see that happening. We're, we'll, we'll get to that. And Peter says, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said, all of them said the same thing. We say that in our confirmation vows. 
and then we do. We deny him. Now it's wonderful what's coming, and we're getting ahead of ourselves, but we need to hear it tonight before we lay our hand on the pillow, is that after the betrayal of Peter and the rest of them, he offers perfect absolution. He comes among them and says to them, peace. Shows them the hands and wound, the hands, the wounds in his hands and inside where the peace was made, and they are perfectly and completely forgiven, as are you. Now, I don't want you to deny the Lord. I don't want to deny the Lord. But I also understand our weakness. I understand the persecution that we face and are increasingly facing in our own communities, our workplaces, and even in our families. I mentioned that in the sermon this morning. And fear is a powerful motivator. It makes us do really dumb things, sinful things. I think of young women, uh, and I saw this much more in the community where I served before being called here. Young women who are often in fatherless homes or, or women who the husband ran out get themselves into desperate situations because of fear and often hand the keys over to another guy or to a guy who would just abuse them, often abuse their children. I mean often. Take all their money, you know, basically be another child house, and then as soon as all that ran out, leave. Leave. Fear. People are afraid of being alone. People are afraid of, uh, you know, facing the world alone, and I get it, all right? Uh, and sometimes we feel awfully alone as Christians. That's why we need to be there for each other. But remember, when we are weak, Christ offers that perfect absolution. In the middle of that, Judas's betrayal, the apostles' denial, is the Lord's Supper. They eat this is for you, and it is for your forgiveness. The body of Christ, his blood was shed. Why? For your forgiveness. And indeed, in Christ, you are perfectly, totally forgiven, holy to the Lord. Let's confess our faith now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we as your Easter people each and every day live in the joy of the resurrection. May we be filled with joy as we go out into a dark and weary world in these dark and latter days as we face, perse as we face persecution and um, suffer for the proclamation and confession of your holy name. But help us be joyful people, even in the midst of so many things we cannot understand. And may, having with our fruit, our faith being nourished by your blessed sacrament this day and the holy word of the Lord, may our faith as we go forth into our communities bear fruit throughout the week. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are crying out to you. We pray for Jane, Stacy, Dennis, Dave, Sandy, and Dawn. Mike, Dale, Dawn, Ron, Heather, Russ, Bill, Joan, Dave, Anita, Katie, John, Bert, William, Joe, Jason, Dee, Marge, Dylan, Josiah, Jeff, Jason, Bob, Ashley, Christy, and Camden. Place your hand upon them. Heal them according to your good and gracious will, keeping them ever mindful of your love. We give thanks for those this weekend who were born uh, anew, uh, through the waters of holy baptism, Theodora and Benjamin. We ask you to bless their families and to keep them now in the faith that you have poured into them through this blessed gift. 
Heavenly Father, all these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we turn to hymn 621 tonight. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. Let all mortal flesh keep silence, and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descending. Comes our homage to thee, man. King of kings, yet born of Mary, As of old on earth he stood, Lord of lords in human vesture, In the body and the blood, He will give to all the faithful, his own self for heavenly food. That stands as one and two of four of him 621. Let all mortal flesh keep silence. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed evening, pleasant rest. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.